Mimosas with Michael. Mimosas with Michael. Mimosas with Michael. Yay! <laughs> okay, so now we're recording. Um, let's clink. Because you gotta always start Cheers. off with having a real mimosa. Yeah. Oh, damn, I refreshed mine. It's really good. Yummy. you to and I'm a, is it how, say your name for me is Brian Brian Nuesi Brian Nuesi that sounds better when you say it yeah <laughs> because you say it right um and so I have been following this um this guy on Instagram and I thought he's really cool I like um the things that you do you're an actor and we do but everything but you were just telling me that you are from the Dominican Republic correct nice um and what brought you to America uh I wanted to come for a better future I I wanted to pursue my education and have a better career here in the U.S. Good for you. And also bring my family to explore a new land. New land? Yeah. Okay, so now you live here in... Do you live in Hollywood now? Now I live in Hollywood, yeah. Okay, and where were you at before? Before I used to live in New York for nine years. Nice, what part of New York? I love Brooklyn, New York. Queens, Manhattan, everywhere. Okay, so... Now, you, did you live there with your family? Do you live here with your family? I, I lived there with my family, and then I was living by myself all the time. And now here I'm living with a friend that I know for four years. Good, okay. So you just like you just packed up and moved out here? Yeah. Good for you. And it's, and it's been good so far? Yeah, I love that here. Yeah, it's, well, it's really hot. Are you okay with the heat? Yeah, I prefer it better than the cold weather in New York. Oh yeah, well, that's probably true. <laughs> and we and and we don't have humidity. Well, we do, but nothing like what most, you know, like we're starting to get some humidity here in LA, but nothing compared to like where you would get even in New York or in the South. Yeah, but here in LA, you have everything. You have the beach. You have the mountains. If you want to go to the snow, you just go over to the mountains, and you'll find it. Yeah. You have everything. Well, and that's why film did so well here. Yeah. Because you, you have everything within, like, just a, a, well, I say an hour's drive, but, you know, we have so much traffic now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so, no, it's crazy. So, uh, and you, so uh, I don't know, what, you're an actor. What do you like to act in? How long have you been acting? I've been acting since January. Really? You're I like, just started. Like you're fresh off the boat. Yes. And it, have you been having a good time? Yeah, it's pretty fun. I love being on set all the time. Yeah. I I live when I'm on set. Yeah, I've been doing it for 13 years, so I get it. Yeah. I, I spent 85% of my life on set. Uh, what's your favorite project to work on so far? Can you talk about it? Uh, I cannot uh, talk about yeah, my I favorite see. project. I know sometimes you can't. <laughs> well, when you can talk about it, let us know. Sure. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in the um, in your bio and stuff. All right. Uh, so you're out here by yourself. Who, who who lived in New York with you? Was your just your mom or your dad? Um, my father. Then I started living on my own when I I turned seventeen. Okay. Yeah. And has is he okay with you? What do you think about you being an actor? Uh, he doesn't even know that I started that career. What? What does he think you're out here doing? Uh, I'm not really close with my father. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's all right. <laughs> it happens. Are you? Close to your mother? Yeah. Okay. Very Does close. Does she know you're an actor? Yeah. She knows that I'm doing everything on set. <laughs> Dude, you have to do everything. So what do you do on set then? I, I'm an ID. I'm a DP. I'm an assistant producer. Now I'm, it's looking like I'm going to follow the path of becoming a producer. Good for you. At Warner Brothers. Okay. But it's coming slowly. Everything in this industry comes slowly. <laughs> What um, what kind of stuff would you like to produce? I like to produce action films. Ooh, action films. Yes. Like what kind? Like what's your favorite kind of action film? Um, my favorite kind of action film. I like. Do you like like the Terminators? Do you like the Fast and Furious? I mean, there's so many different kinds. Like what kind? Um, or just all the kinds. I like sci-fi mixed with action. For example, Godzilla. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Those type of people love Godzilla. Shows, yeah. 
And they just said that that new King Kong that came out a couple of years. Yeah, and there is going to be another one coming up pretty soon. Well, they're doing they're doing Mothra. They're coming. They're coming up with two, I think. Probably. Yeah. I mean, once it does well, they just they really run with it. So, then are you like a fan of Star Wars and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Star Trek. I I worked with a few of the actors that were in Star Wars. Oh, nice. Were they nice? Yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's really good. They better be <laughs> nice. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people I worked with all kinds of actors. Mm. Um, I don't know. What do you What do you want to talk about today? Let's talk about you. No, everybody, all my listeners know about me. Okay, what do you want to know? Um, so, what what do you do? <laughs> okay, so I on set for fun, for fun. What do I do for fun? Yeah. I like road trips. Road trips. I do. I like road trips. Uh, I love traveling. Okay, well, I, actually, I actually thought about going to the Dominican Republic. Why haven't you been there yet? Well, I went to Costa Rica uh-huh. a couple years ago to visit a friend, and then I. Um, instead of going, because I, I try to travel pretty much on my birthday. So one year I went south, and this year I went across. So I went over to England, and I went to London for my birthday. So I'll get there. <laughs> I'll get there. I want to go wherever I have. I love traveling. Um, I like mimosas. Yeah. <laughs> without, without a doubt. The hell, this is, you know, mimosas with Michael. I like, I don't know. No one's ever asked me that. Most people don't interview me on my own podcast. <laughs> So you're like, well, well welcome to Brian's show. I'm <laughs> taking over the today. Brian show. <laughs> we, what are we going to have? Beer with Brian? Yeah, a beer with Brian. Beer with Brian. There you go. You heard it here first. Beer with Brian. Um, no, I I decided to do the podcast, um, which I was talking to on a, with a previous guest, because I have a lot of people who, when they first move here to L.A., they're like, man, Michael, you, you spend all your time on, on set. And I started a little bit later in life. Yeah. Like most people like like most people start your age. I didn't start the career till I was almost thirty, yeah. so I started a little bit later. But in the last like decade, I've done two hundred movies. Like I, I spend so much time on set. I right now I've been directing more, um, and now I'm doing the podcast. So the th- the things that I like are I want to help younger people. I actually just mm-hmm. want to inspire anybody. Yeah. And so I try to find people who I think are out there doing stuff to have them on the show. And like, look, I, one of the things that's inspiring is. You're from a different country. Spanish is probably your first language. <clears throat> you came here, and, and you're you're being able to do the things that you want to do. Right? Yeah, which is I think inspiring. I learned English in eight months. Did you really? Yeah. Here in the states. Yes. But you were just immersed in it, right? So you, a little bit. I used to learn ten words per day. <laughs> okay. But you did that since you were here in the states. Yes. So you did it when you were a bit older. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I moved here when I was 16 years old, and that's when you started learning. And that's when it's when I started. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah, your English was fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you think I know. So that's that's one of the things I like about about this particular show is like now you have a platform for people to hear your story, and I find, I mean, like I said, I've had a couple people on here from Colombia. They had the same story. They're just like, I wanted to come here. I wanted to have a better place, a better life. Uh, the opportunities here were greater. You know, they. I mean, I moved an hour away. I was. I grew up in Riverside, and then I, you know, I, I'm. And when things got hard, I was like, "Mom, I'm coming back home." Whereas you don't, you know, you don't always get that. Yeah, the good thing is that with what I do, I inspire other Latin people Which, because we are not highly represented in the movie industry. Dude, I wrote a, an entire Latino movie, mm-hmm. and it, yeah, people are just like, "I don't know what to do with this," and I was like, "Just make an awesome movie, and for the community that needs it." But yeah, it's, I mean, you guys are finally starting to get a little more recognition, I feel, but it's not, it's an uphill battle. Yeah. But I'm glad, I'm glad that I, I have a place where people can come and I'm, so you find that people reach out to you because of that? Um, a, a lot of my Dominican friends, they're happy that I'm doing my, my job and. That's good. And they feel that they're represented out there. Oh, that you, and, really? and they can see themselves in me, which is important. How does that make you feel? Very good. And, you know, you you want to see someone that you can mirror later on. Yeah, and it, t- it probably really like pushes you to like try even harder. Yes. That's amazing, man. Good for you. And you've only been at it for a few months. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're going to be a rock star soon. Is this your first podcast? 
Totally. Uh, <laughs> you seem a little nervous. I'm virgin. I'm virgin. I'm virgin. You seem a little nervous. Don't be nervous. This is very relaxed. I'm probably. Uh, I probably more. need more mimosas to be more relaxed. Here, here, here. You can have some of mine. Here. Well, I'm gonna share my mimosas with you guys. There you go. Thank you. Have fun. Cheers. Cheers. More mimosa. That's right. This is mimosas with Michael, not mimosa. <laughs> so, um, so before you decided to move out here, what was your original goal was to work in film, or did you have a different goal that you had in mind? Um, I was working in real estate in New York. Okay, how was that? I was pretty tough I used to work 17 hours per day every day and I had to do um, the open houses during the weekends and it was very overwhelming okay and but now you work 17 hours a day and it's fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I mean it's not we don't work 17 hours a day but damn near and but here you're very very creative with what you do yeah of course and you live it no, being creative is the best part. Yes. And it doesn't feel... Like I'm telling you, this podcast will be over before you know it. And it's just because mm -hmm. we're having fun. And once you're having fun, it's not really work. Even though it is work. <laughs> you know? It's how we make our money. It's how we make our living. Yeah. So good for you. So you've been here for three months. And you're going to blow up soon. And I'm going to tell everybody you're on my show first. So no, I discovered Brian. I saw him first. <laughs> um, and then people like years from now can go back on this episode and be like, Oh, that's when he did that puck. Oh, he was such a little baby then. And now look at him. He's a lead in a TV show. Or he's producing stuff. Just look good on your face. You got excited. That's funny. I've been doing a lot of random things. <laughs> oh, dude, you have to do random things out here. You don't, yeah. You don't yeah. get very far. So, um, let's see what she asked. What's your favorite color? Mm, red. Red's a good color. Yeah. Why, why red? Uh, because of its intensity. Because of its intensity. Yeah. Okay, I like that answer. Um, what? I'm trying to think of what else I should ask you. What do you want your audience to know about you? Like your fans? Mm. Like who is Brian? Who is Brian Newest? I'm a simple guy. <laughs> You're a simple guy. Simple guy. Who just packed up his bags and moved to LA. Not very simple. You're a simple guy. Um... Do you, do you only speak Spanish and English? Yeah, in some Portuguese. Okay. But Portu it makes sense. Portuguese is a romance language. Yeah, but not a lot of people can catch it pretty easy. But the thing is, once you learn two languages, yeah. once you know two languages, it's easier for you to pick up the next one because you know how, how languages ha have their own structure. What also helps that, that I know um, you speak Spanish and Portuguese is... Sort of Latin based. Mm -hmm. I just realized these fans are on. People are, are our fans are probably like, we can't hear you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that, fans. It's just really hot in here. Um, but like those romance languages, like Italian and Romanian mm -hmm. and um, French, are sort of all the like those Latin themed ones. So it's probably yes. that probably helps a little bit too, right? Yeah. Before I used to know more French than English, but once I moved here. English overtook my <laughs> your, your mind my mind yeah well, if, okay so if you had to learn a different language which one would you learn a different language yeah I mean just for fun because I've always wanted to learn French but like I don't know German might be kind of fun just because it's a different kind of language Chinese why Chinese I'm I'm Mandarin um because because uh, you are able to reach a larger population I'm trying to turn this fan off and I'm not doing mm -hmm. a good job. All right. It probably changed the whole tone of our podcast, and I'm sorry about the audience, but it's hot in here, and you have all that Latin heat over there. <laughs> so, Chinese, Mandarin. So, Mandarin specific, because, like, with Chinese, because you could also learn Cantonese. Yeah. So, why Mandarin specifically? Is there a reason? Uh, broader population. What? Right. That's smart. I appreciate that. I'm not sure I could ever learn Chinese. It's very tonal, from what I hear. Like, it's like you have to say it a specific way or it's a different word. I have a friend of mine that he knows five languages. <laughs> really? Which one's yeah. other? Um, English, um, Mandarin, Cantonese, uh, and a few others. <laughs> he just goes to town? He's a, he's a badass. 
I had two when I was younger. This is actually really funny. When I was younger, I um I used to belong to a camping club because I like I said I love I love outdoors and all that stuff. <clears throat> when they spoke English naturally because I speak English, but they also both spoke they both spoke um Spanish and French as well. Yeah. Um, because he was I wanted to say he was from Belgium and she was from Spain, right? But the, but together they they spoke those three languages. And what was so funny is when they would argue or if they would talk, they would just flip through all three languages at any given time, right? So you're just like, what are they? I would understand like two thirds of it because they would yell in English and some Spanish I knew and I was also studying French, mm-hmm. but it, they would just flip. It didn't matter. Like he would yell at her. He'd be like, oh, da, da, and he would say something in English and she would respond back in French and he'd get so angry, he'd like say it in Spanish or whatever. It was really the funniest thing. Uh, so it's kind of fun to know other languages because you can just go crazy with it. When you go to Europe, you see a lot of people that know at least three languages. Oh, without, yeah. How amazing is that? And they don't <laughs> even think about it. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in London earlier this year, I didn't hear a lot of English. I mean, I did, you know, but like a lot of the people that are just out walking about, I mean, yeah. especially because it was like they were tourists because you have, how, how many countries do you have in uh, Europe that are just there? So you had people from... You know that we're speaking Italian and people that were speaking French and people that were speaking Spanish. It was just, it was amazing. It was I felt so much more cultured. Just like walking, people were speaking German, <laughs> Romanian. They're just all over the place. It was really awesome, as well as people speaking English. But it was, and I didn't think anything of it. So I would like if I would get lost, I would ask somebody like, "Hey, I'm looking for like this," and they'd be like, "I don't, I'm not like I speak a different language." I was floored. It was crazy. It was so awesome. We're not like that here as much. Which is a shame. Um, people here are too comfortable knowing one language. They don't reach out for more because they think it's just enough. Well, yeah, we have that sort of um, that 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 yeah, we're very ethnic centric. I think in that sense, I do like actually. When I was in high school, I studied French and I lo- I loved it. I would always be like two chapters chapters ahead. So if mm-hmm. we had to like if our homework that night was to like read chapter four and five, I would always read like six as well. Because I just liked learning other languages. I thought it was really... I would, like, conjugate verbs we hadn't learned yet. Like, it was... I love that stuff. That was so mu- so fun for me. But I don't... Because other people don't really use French here, mm-hmm. it didn't do me any good. So living in Los Angeles, it helps that I, I was speaking a little bit of Spanish a little bit. So I had to go back and start learning Spanish. I recently made a friend who knows how to speak in, in Spanish. And he was born in New York... Okay. Uh, Caucasian, born, born and raised in upstate New York. How's your Spanish? Very good. All right. I'm going to practice my Spanish. My Spanish isn't that good. Very good. I, I, I was surprised. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I will learn Spanish, okay. and then we can come back and do the podcast in okay. Spanish. And do it in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure my audience would love that. But we'll, we'll, we'll put little subtitles underneath it or something. <laughs> we'll have to do it for YouTube. I wish I knew more Spanish. Especially because I wrote a Latin, a Latin play, but I, I, I try to make it universal. And then I would tell the actors like, "Hey, if you, if you feel like you wish to say this in English, or Spanish, you should do it because we want to make it authentic." But I, I don't know that much of language. I did fine in Costa Rica, so I think I'd probably do fine in the Dominican Republic. What's the longest time that you have been in another country that is not the U.S.? I was in Jamaica two years ago filming a movie, so thirty-five days. 35 days. Yeah. Usually when I go... So the first country I ever went to, I went to Sweden. And that was... Actually, the same year my play got produced, which was in 2011. I went and I did a play. I did a play there as an actor. We did a Bergman play uh, for Bergman's people during Bergman week. So we were in this little tiny... So we were... So you have Sweden, and then outside of Sweden, about two hours outside of Sweden, you have a little island called Gotland. And right next to Gotland is a little little tiny island called Fura. I know you hear the plane. We talk about it on every show. A little, little island called Fura, and that was where we did the play, and that was amazing. And then the second country I went to was Costa Rica. I went there for my birthday, and that was I was there for maybe a week. So then the second, so then the third place I went to was Jamaica, a month, and then I just got back from London, and I was there a little over a week. So yeah. What about you? Um... And the U.S. Oh, doesn't count because you live here. Okay, uh, I was in Berlin for probably no. I was in I was in I was in Berlin for two months. Okay, what were you doing there? 
Just the, vacation? Vacation, and then I was traveling after that to uh, Barcelona, then Paris, then I was trying to go to Italy, but I had to go back to the Dominican Republic to run some errands there. <laughs> what was your one of your favorite countries then? Uh, my favorite country is Brazil. Oh, I always wanted to go to Brazil. It's amazing there. What was so great about Brazil? Uh, the culture, the people, the energy, the the water. How long were you there for? I was there for two weeks. For two weeks? Okay, I want to I want to go to Brazil and I want to record a podcast there. So I'm putting this out in the universe so we can make it happen. <laughs> Put it out there. <laughs> okay, give me to Brazil, you guys. We'll have mimosas with Michael in Brazil. That sounds like fun. <laughs> we'll have special appearances by previous guests. How you, about that? You're going to la- label it mimosas with Michael in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and we'll, like flashing. I love. Are you? I love Brazil. I yeah. love Brazilian people. I love Brazilian men. I love Brazil. I've always wanted to go, <laughs> but, you know, but I've never been. Well, I mean, I have friends. F- I have friends <clears throat> that are here from Brazil. Like I've met. I've met many people from Brazil, and I have like online friends from Brazil, but I've never been. Mm-hmm. So I think it's time I go. I'll go. I'll go to the Dominican Republic first, and then I'll go down to Brazil. Does that sound like a plan? It sounds like a plan. I was trying to go. To- Colombia right after Brazil. Yeah, I want to go to Colombia too. That that will be next time. <laughs> I did a movie this time last year in in Massachusetts, and one of our crew members was from Colombia, and she's been trying to get me to go down. Mm-hmm. I almost went to Colombia for my birthday. I picked London instead, only because I'd already been. Well, I haven't been to South America. I went to Central, mm-hmm. and I was like, no, I wanted. I I the only country I had been to in Europe was um, Sweden, so I really wanted to go and like. I wasn't there long enough. I needed to travel to other countries, but I was in between projects. I couldn't go that long. So I need to go back again and actually tour. But I would like to go down to Colombia. I just want to every country. I just want to go. That's safe. Some countries aren't that safe right now. Uh, Brazil is pretty much safe. Uh, I feel like the media can mislead you sometimes. I I don't wouldn't think that Brazil is unsafe, though. I don't get that. Uh, that, but there are a lot of th- bad things that they're saying on the news all the time. I mean, but I mean, I went to London and there's always bombings. I mean, London. I mean, they just had, you know, people that were just poisoned. I mean, there's it happens in every country. Totally. So, I mean, I I don't live in the safest neighborhood in LA, so it's <laughs> like, do you know what I'm saying? At least at least with going to London, and I will tell you, me going to London is the first time I traveled by myself. So I went to Costa Rica by myself, but I stayed with a friend, right? And then in Jamaica, I was there for work. And then in Sweden, I was there for the play. So I was always with people that I knew. Going to London, I went, was the first time I pretty much traveled by myself, was staying by myself, was exploring the town by myself. So I wanted to at least go someplace where they spoke English so I could, so I wouldn't have that handicap, you know, of just like trying to figure that out. (laughs) So I said, okay, now I know I can do it and I've done it. So now I'm confident so I could go somewhere else. I just didn't, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I at least wanted to go somewhere where I wouldn't feel like I was out of place because I, uh, sometimes the language is harder. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, like, I didn't want to get lost. But nowadays, what's so good is you have a lot of, like, apps that help you get around. Like, one of the best things is I was in London. They have City Mapper, So City Mapper tells you which train to take. So that kind of helps. Yeah. So did you find, did you, because when you travel, you didn't know English then, right? You were traveling. I... I knew English already. Oh, you did? Okay. I learned in eight months. Yeah, but... Okay. So, so you mean before coming here? Or... Why well, meant when you were traveling? Because I was just wondering, like... But what? But Spanish is your first language. Correct. So what were you speaking when you were abroad? English or Spanish. Okay. Or cool. Portuguese. Either or. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do... I do want to travel more. I just love... So what's learning. next for you... Which place are you going to? Um, I don't know. Now we've mentioned Brazil. I want to go to Brazil. Okay, I have another question. All right, Brian. Which other which restaurants do you recommend here in LA? That's a good question. I don't. I need to go to more restaurants. And I feel here's the thing. I will. I'll answer that this way. Whenever I go to a restaurant, I feel like sometimes restaurants close so much here. So it's like I'm like, yeah, you should go to this restaurant. They're like, I. It's not there anymore. Um. But I, because I live in the valley, I usually go to stuff in the valley. So, okay. my best, one of my best friends and I always go to um, the Lonely Peasant. 
Uh, I like to have mimosas there. That plane is loud. That's like right on top of us. The Lonely Peasant, I think is what it's called. Um, they have a really good chicken pot pie. And uh, they have really good mimosas. Um, and I have a tendency to go to Mr. Furley's Bar. Because it's very chill and laid back. It's not a restaurant, but it's a bar. Ch- cheap drinks. It's very laid back. You can play shuffleboard, darts. I just love... So, like, I like chill, laid back places because I like to sit and talk. And if you go to a, if you go to noisy places, sometimes it's very, very tough. I went to this Mexican restaurant the other night. I could barely hear my friend. What kind of music you like? I like... I'm kind of drawn to house and techno. I think just because when I used to go out dancing, that's what I would dance to. <laughs> I like some dubstep. I just like, like... Doom, 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 doom music. That kind of beat. Yeah. It's just kind of like, what about you? Uh, I can't... I love uh, house. I love, I love pop, uh, rap, R&B, Latin music. Latin music now is taking a whole new level. How so? Uh, Quality-wise. And they're getting more streams. Now... Yeah. now uh, Mainstream artists are col- collaborating even more. Yeah. So with bigger name artists and helping them ex- get out. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. And when you compare to other languages in the industry, Spanish is on the top of the change. Mm-hmm. No, no. Uh, it's like the next one, the second one. Okay. What's the first? Oh, okay. I should because the first one is English, Spanish. and then the second one will be Spanish. But there's a huge. Huge Spanish culture in the country, so that's there's an audience for it, which is good. Yes. Yeah, and now and now a lot of people who probably came when they were your age and had kind of moved up in the industry and found their way and they found their voice and we're in such a good. I feel like, and you could totally correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like in this day and age, there's it's an it's a better platform because you can you can upload things to YouTube, you can upload things to SoundCloud, you can really just push it out there through social media. It's, and it's a great way to just be like, hey, I've done this. Here's what I do. Totally. Now it's all about followers. If you, know. if you have like a million followers and say, hey, listen to my song. I just uploaded it uh, to Spotify. Then it gets, it gets at least half a million. Uh, li- like listens. Listens. Yeah. But then you build your audience and you get your fan base. And then so those big name producers are like, oh, this guy's got something new and different and people like him so he's got a built-in audience that's how they look at it as social media they're like oh this guy's a built-in audience so we don't have to promote like you know promote him which i i like to i have to do that sometimes with the show Mm -hmm. right i try to get a big audience because i want everybody on the show but i still need people to listen to the show so i try to use people that i feel one have a following but they have a following because people are interested in what they're doing so I like to see what they're doing and be like, how can I have them on the show? How can we talk about that? How can I get them on the show to talk about what they're doing to inspire other people? Which is what is big for me. Because like I, like I said earlier, I do, do especially as I'm a little bit older, I get a lot of people who are like, wow, like how, like how you've done so much, like what got you there? And I'll just tell them my story and they're just like, oh my God, so I can do that too? And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I, why can't you? I, you know, I believe anybody can do it. How come you have worked in 200 films in... 10 years well because some are short i mean i've worked on 200 projects okay 20. yeah short i mean i don't i've mostly done features but sometimes i'll day play sometimes i'll just fill in i'll do second unit like i'm all over the place okay but i um because people always ask me, like how do you do it i just never i just went from i would probably when i first started i would like wrap a feature mm-hmm. and you know nowadays they shoot features in like three weeks you know so you could wrap one and go right to another one and have like a couple of days off. So it was like I could do two a month. Well, next thing you know, you do in a year you've done like twenty projects. Well, five years you've done you know, a hundred and ten years you've done two. Like it really is like that. I feel like that's the kind of industry here in LA. In Hawaii works different. Well well yeah. Well how how do you think that? Uh I was working in a project in Hawaii. Okay. And I was there for three months. Just in one project. <laughs> Was it a movie or was it a series? It was a movie. Oh, really? Three months? What, what were they shooting on? Was it like a digital thing or a film thing? It's a Netflix film. Um, okay, well, it could be like a massive project. I don't know. I feel like Netflix... I, I've been watching a few shows on Netflix, and they're really trying to shoot like movie-quality TV shows. 
right? Yeah. So like when you would do TV shows, they they were okay quality, right? But now they're really shooting them like. I mean, look at something like Game of Thrones. It, it, Game of Thrones is so epic, right? So it takes a while, I would think, to film that. So that's good. I want. I would love to be on a bigger term project. The the uh, I that's the kind of stuff I'm on now. Mm-hmm. But like when I first started independent films i was growing in the industry so i would just be like project after project short film i do commercial for a day i go on to a feature and do that um so it was just a lot of stuff would overlap i could just jump and jump around so i that's what i did i loved it yeah but now that i'm now i'm a little bit older i'm I'm really trying to write and direct a lot more so i'm able to like be a little more fluid with my schedule and i'm trying to do a podcast so you know (laughs) that's why i always have to like have really cool guests on (laughs) makes my job easier although i've been talking a lot i'm sorry (laughs) <laughs> just don't get me started I like to go you can go ahead I don't mind <laughs> oh but guess what what time is up it goes oh. fast I know when you're having fun it goes fast that's why I keep looking back at the clock I'm like oh. of course half of it was me trying to turn off that damn fan <laughs> I'm sorry about that and it's hot it's hot in here I'm so sorry yeah I'm still sweating that's okay it's a good sweat <laughs> Um, what would you like to tell your fans or like, what do you want them to remember you by? What do you want to be remembered for? I asked that question not that long ago and I liked that, that question. I like the answer I got. What do I want to be remembered for? Yes. As a hardworking guy, as an achiever, I never give up on projects. I'm always having a positive outlook to things. Um, I always keep my mind positive in everything I do. And if you had to give anybody advice, what advice would you give? To follow their dreams and their passions. Very good. All right. How can uh, how can people find you on social media? Uh, they can find me through my Instagram, which is Brian Nuesi. Okay, and we'll and we'll put the link in in on the podcast so people can find it. And then you can be like, I heard you on the podcast. It was so great. You inspired me. Thank you for being a great great latino actor and producer and inspire me to be who i want to be those are the kind of messages we're going to get have you get is that cool that would be awesome all right you guys you heard it here first reach out to this guy push him don't let him give up and let him inspire you all right let's cheers thanks for having me oh my pleasure thanks for being i have a lot of first timers so i like that I like to set the bar. A lot of virgins. <laughs> I know. Well, well, it's because I I just like to have cool people on. Yeah. And so like I'm not like oh you you know uh, I just like to have cool people on. So, but anyways, this is Michael Colon with Mimosas with Michael. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you to Brian Nuesi for being here. His first time on the show. You guys, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Google Play, Stitcher Radio. Uh, we are also on YouTube. So please reach out. Please find us. Please like and subscribe and share these these episodes is the only way we can get the word out about the people that we have on Um, and from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for supporting us and we will see you in a couple weeks